So what do we have here? So what's a cluster? Well, we talked about this yesterday, but let's discuss with our schematic picture. So Seema, what are the different parts we see here? Yeah, so here we have like a like a technical overview or this kind of like hardware overview of the cluster. So cluster is is more than some of the parts. So basically cluster is uh, is a collection of different things that are that you can then use. So so it has a lot of compute nodes. So it has a lot of uh, of these computers that you can use to run your code. It might have some GPU nodes that have these special GPU accelerators. Uh, it has usually some home drive, which is mainly for like your SSH keys and that sort of things. It might be that it doesn't have it, but in our cluster, we have this home drive. And then it usually has like a bigger, faster file system there and all of all of these things are accessed um, via this login node and right. all of all of the uh, resources or all, all of the computations are managed usually by this queue system that we'll be talking about later yeah oh i guess we shouldn't forget there's a hidden element in this picture which is the network so we see all these lines connecting things but that network is actually a pretty big deal also uh, and Hest is very fast to move all this data and stuff around, both fast and low latency. So what's the difference between a cluster and a bunch of computers you can connect to? Yeah, so so the difference Actually, is... Yeah, maybe yeah, we'll talk about this next, like this mm -hmm. is the next lesson. So let's, yeah, let's... Yeah, yeah in, let's, in the next yeah, lesson, let's... we'll talk about it a bit more, but, but it's even more than, than just... Uh, this queue that we'll be talking about later. It's also about uh, like organizing, organizing the whole thing. So, so with a cluster, you usually have people already also involved in maintaining the cluster. So, so the cluster is like if you just put like a classroom full of computers and let everybody go to those computers, and and if you have just like you just collect a random bunch of computers somewhere that doesn't have any organization for it and it doesn't have yeah. any, any like like who installs software who manages that the system is up mm -hmm. what sort of things uh, like all kinds of things that you might need to manage uh, in in a cluster so cluster is also the people behind it so so mm -hmm. us in in this case yeah so so people who uh, try to make it so that it's usable for every user and and try to make it sort of like like managing this kind of like a big system requires a lot of resources. So that's why it needs to be so certain in a certain sense homo homogenized. Yeah. So it needs to have certain common things in order to be able to manage it. And that yeah. needs us to do choices, uh, like choose things that we want in the cluster and make some choices like so that the average user can have the best uh, use case. But of course, we we are dealing with the averages, but every one of you is an individual. So you might have your own individual uh, thing that you need to run in the cluster. So it's it's this kind of like a um, combination. All of this, yeah. Use let's, of clusters. Yeah. Let's yeah. let's talk about this in the next lesson. So yeah, let, if we scroll down, let's talk about our cluster. So the one at Alto yeah. University. So it's pretty mid sized Like it's large for universities in Finland, but not that large compared to some other university clusters. But a big reason of that is because Finland has CSC, which is the National Supercomputing Center for Academia. And the way it's organized here is in Finland, they have the biggest computers. So that way universities don't need to run their own so much. So our cluster is a bit unique because it's very heterogeneous, which basically means there's different types of computers in it. And in fact, I'll claim that Triton is a very environmentally friendly cluster because we, um, let's see, because many clusters are made, they're used, and then they're all thrown away at the same time, and then they get a new one. 
but here we have the same cluster. We use every part as long as it's worth it for the electricity cost. And then we throw away just that part and get new nodes, processors, GPUs to replace that. So we extract all value out of every component before recycling it. And that makes it literally a ship of the Zeus. So once I was asking, and there might be a few, like it's the same cluster as it was 10 years ago, but every part has been changed, except maybe a few cables here and there, which I think is pretty cool. And also, uh, like, yeah. like similarly to, let's say, your research group might be like, like people change, but the research group persists. Similarly, the cluster is, is a lot of the cluster is maintained uh, in the in the minds of the people who manage it or in the in like the people who who manage it so so i'd, I'd say the oldest parts in the cluster are actually us <laughs> so, so yeah the oldest, oldest part <laughs> are the people who point. actually manage it yeah so yeah yeah okay so there's a good next part down here which is called getting help so this is something that i think we could talk a bit more about so i guess as we've seen from our bugs we've talked about in the icebreaker part. I mean, using technology is hard and that's what we're here for. We actually really like it when people come and ask us questions. Um, so don't, don't feel ashamed to ask us. Uh, so what are the different ways of getting help? Or what, how would you say, how would you recommend someone to approach us well the um it, it it usually like the easiest way is to join our daily garage so we mm -hmm. in Alto have a like a daily garage where we uh yeah. where we where people can uh, ask us questions but there are other ways of connect connecting to us so we have a issue tracker like in, in and if you're in another university your site most likely has an issue tracker or some sort of like a help help uh, email address or something where you can send a question and somebody will answer it so yeah. the easiest way is, is just to get in contact and usually check the help pages so yeah. so what so, what what do we recommend for getting help yeah. uh, that is usually the best way yeah so can you tell us more about this garage like what is it exactly yes so the garage that we organize a, a daily is is basically like a a Zoom meeting room where you can come with your problems. You can ask about ask about your uh, problems, and and there will always be someone there. Uh, and and then based on the problem, we usually like go into breakout rooms and and try to solve the problem. Uh, so you can come with whatever kind of a problem you have regarding the uh, cluster computations or maybe computations in general. So optimization problems. Uh, you can't get your script to run, you miss some software or something. If the problem is something that we can fix during the garage time, we usually fix it. <laughs> if it is something that requires like a longer like testing procedure, for example, like installing a new software or something, we usually create an issue out of it so that we can follow up on it. And if uh, if it's something that requires like a lot of extra work, then we usually involve RSCs, our research software engineers, so that they mm -hmm. can uh, yeah. they can help the like the user, uh, let's say, optimize their code or do some uh, yeah. modifications to the code that, that they need. Yeah. So, what's the difference between between you and the research software engineer? We talked about what. Can you summarize what the research software engineer is again for those who weren't here yesterday? So, yeah, I'd say that the difference is that research software engineers, they can use their time to actually code stuff. So, <laughs> so like, yeah. I can, I can give it like usually consult consultation on what they should do, what, what sort of things would fix the problem, but I don't usually have the time to, uh, actually fix the problem or mm. actually like optimize a code or something. I can give an intro, yeah. like tell what, what should be done but the research software engineers they are paid and and they are hired for actually making co like projects consultation projects for the researchers so that the researchers can 
uh, mm -hmm. then uh, yeah, they they yeah. get the okay. code done by somebody who knows how to code. Yeah, and then there's well, if we scroll down, there is a quick reference here, which you should probably open, and that's basically that for this lesson. Yeah. Yes. And we also have printable cheat sheets for this too, so that might be helpful. Okay. Um should we go on? Yeah. I guess so, so. I guess what's the point of the story here? Ask someone. Yeah, basically. Yeah. Like like okay. the cluster is more than just the machines, it's also like the whole community and you are you can be part of that community as well because it's a shared system everybody shares the problems in the cluster like somebody has encountered the problems before yeah. ask ask for help yeah okay uh we're skipping this page yes. it's not in the schedule yeah let's 